I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Katrina Van Cook. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Uh, I am feeling blessed and I'm feeling inspired. Ooh. That's how I feel today. That's great. It's great. Uh, tell us, what part of the world are you feeling that right now? I'm in Colorado okay. and that's in the United States. Um, just a little bit. It's, we're sort of in the Midwest, but a little closer to California. All right. Well, I've definitely had a few conversations with those in California today, I'll tell you. So I'm coming west. <laughs> now, yeah, so it's it's cool. Well, I'm coming east, right? So it's really yes. east. Yes, east. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please do tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting? Well, I was so happy when you reached out to me because I'm a podcaster too. Yeah. And I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> and I thought it was just amazing that you're like, hey, I'm going to focus my creativity on connecting with people that have a certain skill set. I just thought that was really creative and I was excited to do that. And, you know, I love doing the podcast and it was something that I was inspired to start just out of the blue. And it's wonderful when I get a chance to talk about it and share about it. Yeah, share about it. So tell us about Creative Katrina, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a creativity coach, I've kind of walked this path of spirituality and creative expression and finding a way that the two come together. Because in a lot of ways, people don't realize they are one and the same thing. When you're really in tune with who you are and you're aligned, your creativity feels very natural and it flows out of you. And a lot of people would, on the flip side of that, say, well, that's my spiritual connection. That's me really being grounded in who I am and connecting with my higher self so that I can express myself authentically. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start a podcast. And when I was thinking about whether I wanted to focus strictly on creativity, I felt that that was maybe too regimented. So I wanted to start a uh, balance between the spiritual side and the creative side. And that's why I came up with flirting with enlightenment, because when we're on in this physical body on this planet, we're never really fully enlightened, right? That's mm. part of being human. You're here to learn. And that dialogue or that conversation was really what I wanted to cover when I had a podcast topic to talk about. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why the podcast got its name. Yeah. Well, you definitely knew what question I was coming with next, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who did, you learn, who did you learn the skill from? Like, I'm intrigued still with the connection with flirting. And um, I'm, mm -hmm. I guess so flirting is definitely like the precursor to um, attraction, right? Yes. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, tell me, tell me, is it that you were flirtatious in your earlier days? Or, t yeah, tell me, let me not give the answers. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I, th I think the interesting part in looking at my own creative energy was that I actually really like to be playful and connect with people. And for me, it wasn't about just what is this one person and laser focusing on that person. I like to sort of engage in, in a playful way, which to me is like flirting. So you're you're kind of connecting with people and saying, hey, what have you got going on? I'd like to really connect with you for this short period of time. And then you kind of go along your way. And so to me, it's sort of like a little butterfly that kind of falls on all the different flowers, right? And then takes off after a bit. So when you're looking at all of the different ways that you can connect with people, there's there's just that little playful part that to me says flirting. And when I was on my own spiritual journey, I there was a lot of different things that I wanted to engage with and play with for a while, and then slowly started collecting a toolbox. And all of those pieces kind of come together because at one point in time I was engaged or wanting to flirt with a specific kind of topic. So that's kind of how they they, they all come together for me. And then just enlighten my creativity along the way. And that's a large part of when I work with people, I'm sort of looking at my toolbox and saying, hey, what can they most playfully engage with? Because that's going to make them want to commit to doing the work. Yeah, yeah, that's intriguing. Ooh, that is intriguing. So, okay, you've been doing this and um, 
you know, definitely with the flirting uh, of what you're mm-hmm. doing with enlightenment, it takes some energy, right? It definitely takes yes. some energy. Uh, why will you continue nevertheless? You know, it's a very interesting question because I know when you're putting a podcast out there and you're talking about things that are close to your heart or things that you think are going to help people, that's just one level of it, right? Like, so to me, that's the most important. But then, of course, it's time and energy that you invest in a podcast, right? It's the the producing part and it's coming up with the topics and I'm not getting paid for any of that. So yeah. the best answer I have for you is that it's really a drive within me that feels as if this podcast, if it helps people and eventually I make money on it, that's great. But for right now, I feel like it's a really good tool for me to express myself in different ways while at the same time helping other people hmm. if I can, if they relate to what I'm saying. Yeah, it's wonderful. I think, not I think, the re- one of the reasons I was able to narrow into the podcast is because I share a similar heart um, where my podcast was created, um, definitely on the on the platform of, hey, you're not making any money from this. Now we are, but we're not making any money from this, but we want to bring value. And I think podcasters do share that similar um, place in life. And it's been a great pleasure and a confirmation for me talking to so many podcasters like yourself. Uh, <laughs> that being said, where's the best place for people to connect with you, Katrina? Well, you can catch me on flirtingwithenlightenment.com, which has a little bit more about the podcast itself and all the episodes, including blog posts, if you kind of would just want to scan the blog post first before you listen. And you can also find me at creativekatrina.com if you want to know more about my creative coaching or some of the intuitive and empathic work that I do. Hmm. And what's one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years? Yoga, yoga, yoga. How <laughs> does that make you I, feel? I, yeah, yeah. It, yoga helps me feel really grounded because as a very naturally intuitive person, I didn't understand for a long time. I'm kind of hanging out in my spiritual space and yoga has really helped me kind of get really grounded into my body and communicate better with my body because it's giving me messages all of the time. And if you're not really grounded in that way, you're not actually embracing the full humanness and spirituality as one package. Hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Why would you suggest to someone out there that's listening that they do or even consider doing the same? Oh, absolutely. Yoga would definitely be a good fit for people. But even just getting out in nature, uh, I have a really strong relationship with just the immediate environment in nature. And I feel very much at peace when I'm outside. And so if people aren't really sure in terms of getting started on a spiritual path, that's a good way to, to just go out and listen, just be outside and not have an agenda. Look around you. What are you sensing? What are you smelling? What are you hearing? Um, and also journaling. I feel that there are times when we just have a lot of stuff in our head that we can't quite get out And some things that, you know, frankly, we may feel other people might judge us if we tell them, right? So Mm. the more you can journal and just get some of that energy out and get some objective perspective, that can really help. And then I just look at nature as sort of the healing salve on top of all of that. Mm. Well, amazing audience. We are live with Katrina Fancook. You could definitely check her out at Creative Katrina or flirting with enlightenment.com Katrina let's switch gears for a moment now let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful warm blue Caribbean water oh that sounds amazing Katrina what is your earliest childhood memory I would have to say looking out the back window um, at my parents house my parents still live in my childhood home they bought it because I was going to be born actually and I chose this room in the back of the house that was, again, so I got to look outside at nature and it was just really quiet back there, but behind our house is also a church. And so I would hear the church bells um, as well. And I just, I don't know, it was like a weird sort of calmness that I always feel in that room, even to this day when I go there, because I feel like that's where I felt the most myself. Hmm, And it's weird that at such a young age, that's the first thing I remember. And it's funny because I talked to my mom about it at one point and she said, well, you picked that room because I have a younger sister. And she's like, nope, when when the baby was born and then you want, got to pick either room that you wanted, you chose this one. Mm-hmm. And so that is what I remember most is trying to find my space and where do I fit in the context of what makes me feel really happy and really great. Wow. So how old do you think you were when you made that pick? Uh, let's see. My sister is about a year and a half younger than me, so I was probably about three or four hmm, at the yeah. oldest. 
Yeah. So, quick question: Like, if you needed to check where that room window pointed to, was it north, south, west, or east? I mean, it's it's probably not one of your things, but could you? No, it's, I get what you're saying, and I wish I knew. But yeah. if I had to guess, I would probably say east, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I could probably ask my parents, but yeah, yeah I don't know 100 percent for sure. Yeah, I think you would remember like where the sun is coming. Like, is it coming from the east? Like, is it like the sunlight? And then in the evening, there is no sunlight. Hmm. Yeah, you should find no, out. You're right. It's yeah. funny. I had more of the sunset view. My my sister was on the other side of the house, and she had more of the sun coming in in the morning. Right. So yeah. So yeah. So mm-hmm. probably western. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That being said, why do you think this memory is? Is so clear. I think f- from a young age, I didn't realize that I was highly sensitive or that I was empathic and intuitive. And I think for me, just the fact that I was able to have that window to the outside just made me very calm. Like the other rooms in the house look out front where the front road is, like in front of the house. So there was a lot of chaos. Like you hear the garbage man, you could hear all that stuff. Yeah. Whereas like my little bedroom was sort of separate from everything in the back. And just really quiet. I felt like I could really listen to myself there without realizing that that's what I was doing. Yeah, well, I think you. I think you hit the nail on the head. Like I could leave the room now. Uh, you're good. You did it. <laughs> 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 that's great. That's great. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Oh my goodness! Probably something Madonna. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me one song. One song. Come on. One song. Yeah, it's got to be like a virgin. It has to be that. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. I, if I had to pick. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I have a long time. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 I mean, it's there's like a virgin, there's flirting with enlightenment. I mean, it's pretty close, right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, music. And it's it's the music from back then. I just I love all kinds of music, but yeah, I would say that one of the first influences is definitely Madonna. Wow. She's so fiery and feisty, right? Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. Yeah. All right, well, we've arrived at our destination, Katrina. But before we get off of this time machine, there is a small declaration. Forms. It's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Yes. Katrina, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? I would say that I consistently pass on my skills and mindset to all of the people that I work with intuitively and my coaching clients. I sort of, I don't have children and it's funny because I've never really been drawn to have children of my own. So I sort of look at imparting my wisdom to every person that I connect with in some way, not intentionally, but just sort of just by showing up. Are you married? I have a longtime partner. So technically, I guess you can say some people would consider us married. We've been together for 10 years. Wow. 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 Yeah. Chuck's a, Chuck's a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you've been together for 10 years. You do yeah. not have children. Do you believe in God? Yes. I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do. It's been hard to find some of them, um, but I'm meeting more and more fellow empaths, and that feels really good. Mm -hmm. Tell me uh, about TV. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? I would say I watch TV, but it's fairly inconsistent, so I more tune into my specific shows that I like. All right. So is it like around three hours a week, probably? Yeah. I mean, I think in, in any given week, it's somewhere within that range. Yes. All right. All right. And what about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh, my goodness, Angle. If I could only be on the computer like two hours a day, I would love that. But yeah, <laughs> I think it, it varies at the maximum. It's probably eight uh, just because I get pretty frazzled. Uh, so I try to be mindful of that. But anywhere between five to eight. If you had to share with us, Katrina, your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, what would you say that is? That creativity is the natural and authentic expression of the real you. And no matter what comes out of that, don't judge it. It's just a natural part of you stepping into who you truly are. And that's what we're all waiting for. Hmm. Katrina, this has been a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I would just like to say, first of all, thank you for the beautiful light you bring in the world and doing this for people because that's amazing. And I really do appreciate that. And if there is anything that can really draw you into the center of who you are is being inspired by people that do the kinds of things that you do. So I just encourage more people to connect with you and 
also find other people that share their passions and interests like minds and hearts always inspire each other love it hey thank you for that katrina fancook hey again great pleasure thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 minute convos with angel jones thank you so much it was great to be here thank you for being on 12 minute convos with angel jones stay tuned for more from our advertisers diabetes is a mountain pandemic it's a disease that's not acute but chronic Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyaj.com. That's poemsbyaj.com.